hello and welcome to Jonathan from the Heart. I'm Jonathan Asley of JonathanAsley.com and I'm so excited to be doing this short video for you today. Our topic, how to make a man addicted and commit to you. <laughs> How to make that happen. Really quickly, if you're brand new to my YouTube channel, please hit the subscribe button, hit the bell so you can be notified of new videos. And if any time during this video the content resonates with you, please hit that like button so I can be seen in the YouTube algorithm. Really quickly, these are my weekend videos I shoot out on my balcony, very similar to the videos I shoot in my private group called Midlife Love Mastery. This is a group where you can have direct access to me on a regular basis, and based on the questions you ask, I shoot personalized videos just for you. I'm pointing the finger at you. <laughs> so check out the link below to my VIP group called Men Life Love Mastery. Okay, we're going to talk about how to make a man addicted and want to commit to you. And before I do that, though, I have something I want to share with everyone. And that is, I, I totally understand from a woman's point of view how absolutely frustrating the dating process can be today because it can seem like most men are rather flaky in the process, they're inconsistent, they happen to be more hyper-focused on the physical aspects and not really wanting to commit fully on a relationship. And certainly there is the variety of men who have clinical issues that have created very disruptive relationships out there. And I recognize your frustration. Now, ladies, I do have something to say. For every complaint that a woman has on a man, a man has a complaint on a woman as well. And here's the challenge, because we can sit there and point the fingers at one another, and yet all of this pointing fingers creates more divide between the sexes, and it creates an emotional chasm between the sexes. And quite frankly, as a male out there, I am so frustrated with the male bashing that goes on out in the dating, mating, and relating realm, and just in general, how much male bashing goes on. And for the most part, men's identities for thousands of years has been solely from the perspective of being a provider protector. I repeat that, their, their whole responsibility was to be a provider protector Providing as in providing the food, making sure the food was there, and protecting them from enemy clans. And so for this has been generationally built into men that that's how they operate. The challenge is, is we've shifted as a society, as a world, because we are no longer constantly at war, although here in the United States it's almost becoming a civil war, um, but that's a whole other conversation as well. So that requires us to lean more into the emotional aspects of humanity. And most men aren't even prepared for that. And most men are, are criticized and, and stifled when they, are, when they do try to be emotional. And quite frankly, most men don't know how to navigate their emotions. And I'm here to say it's time to rewire this whole narrative of how dating, mating, and relating should be. Because in the past, it was much simpler. It was much simpler because for the most part, and I want you to think back throughout history, for the most part, when you connected with somebody, it was from your tribe, it was from your village, it was from your town, it was from your work environment. So most likely this person wasn't a stranger to you. In fact, you had multiple um, degree, you didn't have all these degrees of separation. You had more degrees of connectivity. Most people knew your family members, they knew your friends. And because of that, it made it safer to be in a relationship for, for thousands of years. It made it feel more emotionally safe to be in a relationship. And this is true for men and women alike. And now we live in a whole different environment where we, we use our phones to connect with people. Roughly about 50% of all new relationship these days is happening through an online connection. And I suspect that number is going to increase. So we are, as I said, and I know I talk about this incessantly about understanding that when we're meeting total strangers and we know nothing about them, we don't feel safe to want to lean into a relationship. Now I know women tend to bond to men through sex, so you literally naturally become attached to someone in a relationship, but men don't necessarily bond through sex. I'm repeat that, men don't bond through sex. We actually bond when we feel emotionally safe 
with a person, when we actually feel emotionally safe. You look at any couple who's happily married, if you ask the man, what is it about his spouse that he just absolutely adores? And most men will say this, almost, almost every single guy will say, I married my best friend. I married my best friend. And what's interesting about this, because let me tell you about men for a second. When it comes to our male friends, we don't share our emotions with them. We don't share our emotions with each other. In fact, when, you know, it's interesting, it wasn't until my son passed away, and those who know me know um, my 19-year-old son passed away a few years ago, it wasn't until my son passed away that my three, my two closest friends and I actually began speaking to one another at an emotional level, at an emotional level. I mean, and I'm in my 50s, folks. And this is true for so many men. And I got to tell you, there are men in their 60s that still haven't spoken to someone at an emotional level, at an intimate level, at an intimacy level, which means into me you see, into me you see. And so what's going to change this narrative, particularly for those who are seeking a romantic relationship, is a deeper understanding of what does it take to get to know another human being? What does it take to become emotionally safe with another human being? And the problem is most dating rhetoric is based on attraction. And because of that, most dating process today is hyper-focused on chemistry and romance as being the leader of the, relation, the indication of relationship success without understanding the more important mechanics to a healthy, happy relationship, which is, and if you know my relationship iceberg, here it is, everyone. Right at the tip of the iceberg, you know, above the water lines attraction, the tip says chemistry, but shared values, blendable lifestyles, and emotional maturity, that's where compatibility comes in. And so if you really genuinely want this guy that you're with, if you really genuinely want this man that you are with or that you're going to be with in the future, then it's so critically important to recognize emotional maturity. Is this person capable enough to actually be in a relationship with me? And emotional maturity looks like this. It looks like actions consistently matching words. Um, victor consciousness and not victim consciousness. And I got to tell you here in the United States, we are suckling on the nipple of victim consciousness. Everybody is a victim. In fact, when you complain about an op the other gender, you're operating from a victim consciousness. Number three, they actually know how to actively listen when there's a conflict and acknowledge your partner's point of view. I call it fighting fair. You listen to your partner's point of view, you acknowledge their point of view as being true for them. That's what an emotionally mature person does. Number four is empathy. And empathy isn't just I can feel your feelings. Empathy means I care about your feelings and more so, I care about my own feelings. And lastly, transparency. Transparency means if it's material to the relationship, you're going to speak up. And where most people fail, men and women alike, is in the area of emotional maturity to begin with. And then next is that blendable lifestyles. Can the two people that are dating right now, can these lifestyles eventually blend with one another? And folks, it takes a level of intentionality. You have to be intentional when you date. This, this narrative that's been so barraged and sold over and over again about chemistry and romance, yes, it works two out of 10 times, maybe. I don't know. I can't even guess. But, this, but this, uh, if you're not intentional in the dating process, then it's going to make it very difficult. And lastly, do you share the same values? Do you share the same values? Because if you really want to make a man addicted to you and want to commit, then he's going to have to feel like this is the safest place I can be. This is the emotionally, this is, I feel emotionally safe in this relationship. I feel emotionally safe in this relationship. And if you want that to happen, I'll share that with you in a moment of how to make a man feel more emotionally safe. 
And really quickly, I do want to identify my t-shirt says, if you noticed, it says, people should seriously stop expecting normal from me. We all know I'm, it's never going to happen. Folks, I'm the contrarian out there. I'm giving you advice contrary to public opinion and tradition. Really quickly, I want to thank everyone for your kind messages for my father. Uh, he did have his surgery a few days back, and it seems like he's doing well. I am pre-recording this video, so... Um, but I want to thank you all for the love and support. I want you to all see my coffee mug today. It says, do all things with love. Do all things with love. Folks, why, my, channel, my channel's intent is to help shift the narrative from an egoic way of dating, an egoic way of operating, and operating from a heart-centered space. How to connect with your heart. If you're not familiar with my book called What the Heck is Self-Love Anyway? What the Heck is Self-Love Anyway? There's a link below. It's a journey of personal development, self-help, and spiritual work so you can begin to connect with your heart. And there's another book I highly recommend for everybody is Return to Love by Marianne Williamson. Return to Love by Marianne Williamson. There's a link below to all the books I recommend. Folks, the reason why I recommend so many books is because if you want to be able to to make a man addicted to you and want to commit, then it's going to require you to lead by example from the emotional aspects of a relationship, for you to lead by example. You know, it's interesting. My best friend um, met a woman some years ago. Actually, I fixed him up. And my best friend, I mean, the dearest, he's a mensch. He's a mensch, great guy, but not very emotionally expressive. And then he met a woman who was incredibly emotionally expressive. And he was highly attracted to her and they got along great. They had shared activities, hobbies, mutual interests. They did stuff together. They had their physical intimacy. But what she introduced him to was for him to connect to his heart, for him to connect with his heart. And how she did it is she led by example. He, she led by example and he was literally addicted to her and, and and willing to commit. Now, the sad part of the story, and I don't want to get into the particulars, because like all relationships, there was a challenge between them that made it difficult, okay? And sometimes that does happen. But you know what? He's now capable of opening up his heart. And let me just tell you something. Sometimes people are in relationship they shouldn't be in relationship with. So when you use what I'm about to share, do this for only the guys that are really the right fit for you, not the wrong fit. And I know many of you get attached to the wrong fit and then you complain about the guy when you don't take ownership in your own part and that's where that victim consciousness comes in. So what's going to shift this narrative? Let me tell you something, folks. It's going to start by being radically honest radically honest and this is why if you watch my videos and I continually invite everyone to do this is before you get together physically and I mean sexually you purchase two copies of this book eight dates by doctors John and Julie Gottman two copies of this book eight dates by doctors John and Julie Gottman and the reason folks why I repeat myself sometimes is a when watching a video <laughs> You know, it's hard to write everything down, so that's one of the reasons why, so for those that complain that I repeat myself, the other is to emphasize the point and why I'm recommending this book. And let me just tell you something. I hear this, I mean, I, I have clients and, and, and followers reaching out to me, thanking me, Jonathan. I bought two copies of the book. We began reading it and we began talking with one another. We began talking with one another because folks, here's the sad part. When chemistry and romance leads the process, most of the time you're talking at each other and you're not talking with each other by exploring the more emotional aspects of the relationship. By introducing this content to a man, you're actually helping him get closer to you. It makes him want to get addicted to you because you're leading by example. And I'm going to recommend one more book before we wrap up today. And Well, actually a few more books. I'm going to recommend reading Emotional Intimacy. Ladies, just because you can vomit your feelings doesn't mean you're good at expressing your feelings. 
So I know a lot of you live in this delusional cloud that just, be, this is your complaint about men. Men are emotionally unavailable and women are, but you're not emotionally available. You're just emo emotionally um, vomit your feelings and it requires expressing oneself in a healthy, happy way. This is why I continually recommend reading the book, Nonviolent Communication by Marshall Rosenberg. And by the way, this should have been this should have been titled Compassionate Communication. By the way, again, the link's all there below. So it's going to require being radically honest right from the get-go by being more intentional, by being more curious and inquisitive and asking better questions so you don't, A, fall for that emotionally um, immature person. You're going to have to ask better questions if this person's lifestyle can fit in mind. And lastly, do we share the same values? In fact, in my private coaching, by the way, there's a link below if you want to schedule a call with me. That's what I help women with is teaching how to become radically honest based on your personality. And many of these books can help you as well. In fact, I want to recommend two more books before we wrap up today. And I know you might seem frustrated by all these books, 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 books. Folks, there's nothing more powerful than a, than a nurtured mind. And a nurtured mind shows up with a nurtured heart. And a nurtured heart shows up with intimacy. And when a man is feeling your emotional intimacy, he's going to want to connect with you. He's going, it's just, again, not all men are capable of this. This is why choosing the right guy is so critically important for you because you oftentimes are investing in the wrong person. And by the way, if, you're the, if he's the wrong person for you, you're the wrong person for him. So I said I was gonna mention two more books. I want you to check these two books out, Couples Communication and How to Build Trust in a Relationship. Pause the video if you need to and write all these down because if you want to have a juicy, delicious, healthy, happy relationship, then it's gonna require being more intentional, being more intentional than the fantasy way of most people are dating. And as I started this broadcast, look, I understand it's a mess out there. It is very frustrating for you women. And by the way, it's frustrating for men too. This is why it's gonna require entering your heart from a compassionate place by doing all things with love, by doing all things with love, starting with the love for oneself, can you emote out into the world this shift of energy? And I promise you, if you practice what I preach here, you will begin to see different results. My clients use these techniques. God, I don't even like using the word techniques. They use this experience to help, help change their own experience. And I want the same thing for you. All right, enough preaching. I think you get the point and everything. If you want a man addicted to you and want to commit, then there's going to have to be emotional safety built. And how is that built? Leading by example. If this is something you want, then start leading by example. And let me know how it works for you. Let me know what you think of my t-shirt really quickly. Uh, post a comment below. I do my best to read them all. All right, I'm going to wrap up this video as I always do. First off, giving myself a big gigantic Jonathan Barrack of self-love. I'm going to reach into the camera and give you a hug of love if that's okay. I'm asking you to turn to someone, a pet, a teddy bear, a pillow, and give it or them a hug of love because hugs are a great source of love. And let's face it, we could all use more love in our lives. Thanks a bunch. Bye-bye now.